Hello, um, my name is Daniel Stillwell, and I'm the editor of the IFTA e-newsletter, and we are at IFTA here in Spain, and we have with us today an illustrious guest. Um, she is the president of the Australian Association for Marriage and Family Therapy. No, not for marriage, just... Uh, just Family Therapy. Australian Association of Family Therapists. Of Family Therapists, mm -hmm. and uh, um, also doing a presentation here um, at, the, at the conference. So yes. before we get into your your work, um, let's start off with oh Margaret Hodge. Sorry, did not actually. Hello everybody. <laughs> say that. Um, so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what work you do, mm -hmm. um, practice or or whatever you know how you spend your professional time, um, mm -hmm. what uh, language do you use to identify yourself with, and uh, what does that look like in your context? Okay, so if I forget one of the questions, that's just, all good. Just prompt me. Okay, so how I got into um, family therapy was some many years ago when I spent quite a long time looking at narrative therapy with Michael White, who was actually based in Adelaide in mm -hmm. Australia, and um, I really appreciated his introduction to family therapy work, therapeutic work, and the way that he managed to and the way that he spoke to his his clients and how he had a different kind of format as it might have been in general counselling. Mm. So it was ve very much more invitational. Um, there was a, an offside, I think, called mo mo motivational interviewing that really sat with the narrative. Um, and so I had subscribed to that form of family therapy for a long time, but because it was based in Adelaide, it wasn't something that I was ever going to be able to get a master's in or a diploma in because you really had to do your traineeship in those days in Adelaide. But what it did, did do was prompt me to look at how I, what I wanted to do in the future and part of what I had been doing was counselling. So I'd had a, a master's in counselling and I had master's in social work and <clears throat> I felt that in both of those dimensions there are certain things that you, you need to do as part of a social worker or a counsellor. There are you know, kind of fairly prescriptive things sometimes that how you speak to, to clients and what is the end result mm. of the conversation that you have with people. So I started to, to merge narrative into some of my work with clients that worked quite well. Um, and then I was drawn to um, family therapy work because I was working with families and I felt that I needed to really have a different structure to make sure that all family members were actually included in the family therapy right. work. So I then did my masters in in family therapy work as well and um, was drawn into then being part of the association it is a volunteer organization so we don't have we have one paid staff member um, and I found that um, the family therapy work for me is very difficult I work at the moment in the family court system mm. and for those people who work in the family court system, particularly in Australia, it's very adversarial um, because by the time, this is my experience, by the time the couple are sent to us mm -hmm. for counselling, there's been huge rifts mm -hmm. and dissension in families and it's really difficult to try and help people move from that kind of stuck place. Right. Um, and in the midst of all of that, then there are children who um, are also siloed because of often how the, the parents are actually managing their own relationships. Right. So family work for me was really important. It started in social work for me. I worked with families and I got a, a really understanding of you have to include family members. You can't just focus on one person. So... Um, that kind of led me to, um, somehow I got involved, I'm not quite sure how I got involved with VAFT at the time, but um, I came on to the, the Committee of Management with VAFT and have stayed on that um, committee for quite a long time. 
So it is, it's um, evolving now in, in Victoria particularly. Mm -hmm. um, we have state representation in each of our states apart from Northern Territory in Tasmania. But we, um, we're kind of evolving, I get a sense. So we're offering quite a lot now. We have PDs, we have webinars and we have our conferences once a year. And like most places in the world, we've had some trickiness because of COVID. Right. Yeah, so we haven't had that interaction in the same way, but we've been able to run a professional development calendar and that's brought in um, a range of kind of people who might not have known about ACT but they were appreciating the, the professional development and now they're looking at whether or not they would become family therapists. Um, so we have about four or five family therapy schools around Australia um, and it's I think it's increasing and I think it's actually starting to have a much more prominent profile um, within the government and non-government sector because I think when I first started to um, take on some of the, the work that I was doing, you either had to be a psychologist or um, you had to be trained in a counselling role. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't really any scope for family work. It was called family work at that stage. Um, so narrative um, is something that I have been really subscribed to. Motivational interviewing is another kind of dimension that I use at times mm -hmm. to encourage people to be a bit more specific about what it is that they want um, and what do they want out of counselling. Um, so family court work has been one dimension but I'm also a counsellor for you know, general issues with individuals or, or couples um, and I don't, um, I don't subscri subscribe now to a p particular theoretical framework. Um, I, I think I engage mostly pretty well with families because I'm pretty good at listening mm -hmm. um, and questioning more about, well, what do they see as the problem and how do they think that they can actually change it um, if they can? Right. And what, what are the things that kind of get in the way? If you can't, what do you think you need? Um, and I think the thing that I've noticed perhaps over the last few years is that people um, who are coming as clients um, have a, a greater sense of, this is just my view, a greater sense of what they want to get out of counselling. Because mm. once upon a time you were told or suggested, why don't you go and have some counselling? And people didn't really get a sense of what that meant, but right. they went and they did what they were asked to do. But nowadays, I think people are much more aware of what they want, mm -hmm. um, of what they hear, um, and what do they expect, which I think is, is, you know, for them, they've got their own authority about that. But right. what it has meant is that, apart from the family court process, because they're told they have to be, mm -hmm. they have to go and see somebody. But I've noticed with some of my colleagues as well as myself that people well, may only have a single session. Mm -hmm. Now, years ago there was single session therapy. Right. Um, and that was often very frustrating for clients because they, they connected with their therapist and they wanted further sessions right. and then they were told, no, this is only about a one single. But nowadays, um, I'm experiencing, you know, probably 50-50 that after the first session, the, the, ther the client chooses to find somebody else. Hmm. And I've, I've, I've kind of talked to a couple of my colleagues about that and they said, yeah, I think um, people are a bit more um, discerning about what they think they need. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Because, they're often, because people are often re referred to you through somebody else mm -hmm. because they thought that the counselling sessions were really appropriate and really suited them doesn't necessarily mean that who they're referring is going to feel the same. Right, and mm -hmm. the, the balance of 
client empowerment, but also mm. one of the reasons you're here is you don't know what you need yet. And so that, mm. that, um, that literacy of expectation when it comes to clinical stuff, it's uh, how things are marketed, how things are talked about, mm. how things are portrayed in the media, all that plays a, a role. Mm. And then we see them at the door and it works or it doesn't. Well, it, exactly. And what I now say is that, and I think because when I was a foundling counsellor, I probably wouldn't have been so honest, but what I would say now is that I'm prepared to give you a couple of names of people that I know, mm -hmm. but you need to make your decision and your choice about how that person works for you. Right. That's all that I can say, if mm -hmm. I can give you a reference. Um, and... You know, it, what what might be really appropriate and positive for one person may not be for you. Mm -hmm. So you need to find, I think, something somebody that you connect with, and I won't be at all um, be phased about that or be upset sure. about that because it, this is a really important part of your learning and your change. Right. Uh, we only have a few more minutes left, but I wanted you to spend a couple of minutes talking about the presentation that you oh, had here. Oh, presentation I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that was, it, it kind of was an evolving process, um, how to assess for family violence in the room. So I um, work with a colleague in Melbourne and um, she works for Relationships Australia, which has an office in every state in okay. Australia. Okay, good. And... Um, in Victoria, they were running for, have done for a number of years, caused a relation, called a relationship counselling program. And the idea was to try and, um, well, they offer that program to external um, staff members, but also, and mainly, I think it was some month, some years ago, to support the counsellors that they had mm -hmm. within their system. Um, and what and, I, and because of what took place in Victoria, particularly um, after the deaths of a number of women over a couple of years, and we had um, um, an investigation by the state government, which led to change in how counsellors and psychologists were to be um, how they needed to actually assess mm -hmm. for what was happening um, in that relationship, particularly around family violence. So Relationships Australia decided to um, provide to the counsellors that they have in Victoria the addition of um, an underpinning of family violence mm -hmm. and how to maybe manage it, what are the questions we need to ask. And that also moved that that organisation into offering the relationship counselling with the lens of family violence to people outside of their organisation. So counsellors outside of their organisation who were recognising they needed that extra kind of dimension in their work. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've been in, in um, delivering that program along with a colleague of mine, helping counsellors um, to think about family violence in each and every session that they're talking about. Right, mm. right. Um, and that has kind of, through the conversation that I had yesterday morning, is that it has changed sometimes because people have not been accountable mm -hmm. or needed to be accountable, um, and they could, and they would not have really been con confronting enough to say, you know, I would say this is family violence. Um, or do you understand what family violence is? Right. Because um, a lot of women don't, and a lot of men don't. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it wasn't out of, ne it was kind of out of necessity that we had to change because that was the expectation from the state government. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had, we had to change um, each and every one of us are supposed to change, and we are, we have, because you are no longer to dismiss the fact that oh, it was just um, something that I did, right? You know, in the spur of the moment, mm -hmm. that 
kind of doesn't cut it now. And counsellors struggled with actually having to talk about that mm -hmm. and challenge that because that's the dimension I was kind of talking about before, that if you start to challenge that, then you want to keep that person in the room with you. But if you challenge to the point where they feel uncomfortable, they're going to, they're going to turn, they're right. turn away. So um, for me, um, the small cohort that um, we've worked with through Relationships Australia is one thing, um, but we, we... So Relationships Australia have actually started to look at ensuring that all of their councillors are very well aware of what the um, state government is wanting mm -hmm. around in counselling modalities that it's it's not just us it's in their helping professions to make sure that i guess they ask the question and it's how you ask the question right right because people will just often say um we don't get along very well Right. Yes. Yeah. So so much of uh, asking hard questions, mm. asking scary questions, mm. is also like you said about that the confidence, the comfort, the familiarity that the therapist can lead that with mm. to let them know that yes, we can get through this together, as opposed to everything being taboo. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you so much for talking yeah. about this, and mm. and more important for doing that kind mm. of work because that's so important and not only for the clients that you work with, but the fact that you get to help and train and mentor and supervise mm. other people mm. um, to improve the field as a whole. Mm. Uh, so let's end with a slightly uh, fun question, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, you're from Australia, you're mm. here in Spain. Uh, where in Europe would you travel if there was no expense, if you just could go anywhere? If I could go anywhere? Uh, well, I'd love to go to Ireland. Ireland, okay. Um, Ireland is somewhere that I've um, always been drawn to and mm -hmm. haven't yet gone there. Lived there, lived in England for years, never crossed that mm. that channel. But yes, Ireland is somewhere that I think it's very synonymous with Australia. Mm. Our forebears came from England and Ireland, and I think um, there's something about wickedness about them that <laughs> I like. <laughs> Okay, I like that. That's a great answer. Well, thank you so much, uh, Margaret you. Hodge, for joining us, and uh, we'll be seeing you around. Okay, all right. Thank you.